I'm Anne Marie Green, and we're going to begin in England with President Biden's efforts to restore the U.S.'s reputation abroad after four years of the Trump administration. He will be sitting down with some of the world's most powerful leaders when the G7 summit begins in just a few hours. As many countries around the world struggle to contain the COVID-19 pandemic, these seven nations are rolling out a plan to combat vaccine inequity. They're donating one billion doses to those in need. Ian Lee is in London following the latest on the summit. Ian, what's ahead for President Biden today? Good morning, Amory. Yeah, there is a lot to discuss, including a global minimum corporate tax rate and how to tackle climate change. President Biden is also expected to press allies to take a tougher stance on China and Russia. And of course, leaders are confronting the coronavirus pandemic. The G7 nations are donating 1 billion coronavirus vaccines to the rest of the world. We're doing this to save lives, to end this pandemic. That's it, period. The U.S. is leading the way with 500 million doses of Pfizer's vaccine. 100 low and lower middle income countries. They will be the beneficiaries. French President Emmanuel Macron said the European Union must have the same ambition as the United States. His country is donating 30 million doses by the end of the year. The United Kingdom will add 100 million. The seven wealthy nations are expected to outline their commitments later today as the summit officially begins. Everybody is absolutely thrilled to see you. President Biden received a warm welcome from British Prime Minister Boris Johnson on Thursday. There's so much that they want to do together with us, uh, from security, NATO, uh, to, to climate change. And uh, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's a breath of fresh air. As the Biden administration looks to reestablish America's role as a global leader, First Lady Jill Biden wore this message on her jacket. Well, I think that we're bringing love from America. I think that's important right now, that people have feel a sense of unity from, for all the countries and feel a sense of hope after this year of the pandemic. The First Lady said she and her husband are looking forward to meeting Queen Elizabeth on Sunday and insists President Biden is overprepared for his meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin next week. And Marie, President Biden has a tailwind heading into his first overseas trip. The image of the United States around the world has sharply improved since he took office. According to a recent Pew Research poll, confidence in America went from 17 percent under President Trump to 75 percent under President Biden, while the favorability of the U.S. jumped from 34 percent to 62 percent. Yeah, that is quite a boost. Um, G7 leaders are also expected to announce support for a new tax plan. Tell us about that. Yeah, President Biden and other G7 leaders will publicly endorse a global minimum tax, or GMT, if you will, of at least 15 percent today. They're also expected to announce an agreement on a new tax that is linked to where companies make money rather than to where they're headquartered. And this will effectively end the practice of global companies trying to dodge taxes by moving their headquarters offshore to low tax jurisdictions. The Biden administration says this strategy is aimed at ensuring ensuring globalization and trade benefit working Americans and not just billionaires and multinational corporations. Some critics, though, say that the GMT doesn't go far enough and they want companies paying more. And we also know that President Biden and UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson signed a new Atlantic Charter yesterday. What does the document include and why is it significant? Yeah, Marie, we need to go back uh, for this one. It's been 80 years since the original Atlantic Charter was signed between FDR and Winston Churchill at the beginning of World War II. And this new revised version pledges cooperation against global challenges and rivalries in the 21st century. President Biden and Prime Minister Johnson say it's important to reaffirm alliances as democracies confront autocratic countries like Russia and China. Some of these threats include cyber attacks and activities undermining rule of law. To counter them, they'll be looking to reinforce NATO and other international institutions, while also addressing global issues like climate change and the economic fallout from the pandemic. But if there is one headline, Amory, to come out of the signing, it's Biden wants to show that the Trump era of America first is over. Indeed. Ian Lee, thank you very much.